good balance with my build to do both, right? Uh, so that I can take care of any situation that we might need. Uh, in this situation, I was able to track her down, and we should be able to kill her no issue. I just have to catch up and hit some autos. Actually, she's just going to walk in and die to that. And then I'm not really scared. I'm genuinely far ahead, so I can kill the emoji as well. And then I'll go ahead and call the ghost fury here. Hello, hope you're doing well. Today we're playing some soul in the mid lane. This is a ranked match, and I've been playing quite a lot of ranked uh, recently, specifically the last two days, because I haven't really played any ranked this season. Uh, the reason for that being that I have seen a lot of growth in the YouTube this season. I started the Discord. I've been playing a lot with you guys, uh, just playing casuals or custom games, 10v or 5v5, sorry. Uh, but at this time, I don't know, this week I decided to start playing ranked. Uh, so here we are. This is the Soul game. This is actually before the Medusa game that you guys saw yesterday. Uh, so this is around Plat 1, I believe. The Medusa video is Diamond. Uh, just in case you guys were wondering. Uh, with that, I do want to mention that Medusa video. Uh, it's a very, very good video in my opinion. I really, really do recommend you watch it. And it's important, in my opinion, to the point where I would actually recommend just putting this video on pause going down to the description and watching that Medusa video. Um, it's a Medusa video of me playing carry, uh, but it applies to mid just as well because the whole topic of that video is actually how to win your ranked matches, how to carry, whether it be from mid, whether it be from carry. That's from the perspective of carry, but I really do believe it applies to mid as well. Uh, I don't know how to put it into words. Uh, this video has not only opened my eyes as a content creator and what I can go ahead and teach you guys a bit better than what I have been doing. I haven't been doing too good of a job, in my opinion. After that, making that video, I've seen kind of the um, extent to which I can achieve my goal, which has always been my YouTube videos. For my YouTube videos, the goal has always been uh, to teach you guys how to play the game in these you know, 20 minute video gameplays. Uh, and give you guys the videos that I didn't have when I started playing this game so that you guys could be better off than I was when I started playing this game because I have been playing for a long time uh, and I should have been at my current level a long time ago and honestly I know it's a bit weird it's like why is he still talking about the Medusa video I really do believe you should go watch it um I wouldn't be I this is not something I usually would do it literally harms me to tell you to click off of this video and go watch that one uh, but like I mentioned, very, very good video in my opinion. Uh, if you saw the community post, you know how I feel about it. I genuinely do believe that if you watch that Medusa video, um, that you are going to leave the video being a better player than you were from before you watched. Alright, that is enough for the Medusa video. Uh, this game is going to be a bit different. I don't, I, I really do not have a topic after that Medusa video, which were recorded and... Uh, they weren't recorded at the same time, but I edited this video right after the Medusa video. I don't have the energy to go into it like I did with the Medusa video. Uh, but uh, we're just going to have a fun little video where I talk to you guys about Soul as a character. Uh, we won't go over the abilities because I have a video going over Soul's abilities and I'm trying to keep it to one or two of videos where I kind of go over the abilities and tips for them. Um, if you want to... If you are curious about Soul's abilities, I have some earlier Soul gameplays, and by earlier I mean like literally a couple days ago, where I went over her abilities. Uh, but in this uh, specific game, we're just going to commentate over the new build specifically. Um, so in every video, I always tell you guys one thing when I give you guys the builds, because obviously the title is always going to be something like, hey, this is the best Soul build ever created by, blessed by God himself. Uh, you know, if if Jesus were here, he would be running this build on Soul. Like, you know, the the thumbnail is always going to be a bit um, quirky and misleading. But the truth of the matter is that there is no bet. There is no number one build. There is no best build on Soul, right? There is a best build for a certain situation, and that's what I'm trying to talk about in this video. Um, basically, the whole point. That I'm trying to get across throughout this whole video and what we're going to be talking to on top of the commentary obviously is going to be how to build in general to be honest um, according to your situation there is no one perfect build and you guys hear me talk about this at one point or another in every single video where I go in depth into the build 
Um, but specifically, this one is very interesting because I want you to look at our team composition here. I pick Soul. This is a ranked match, so we don't all get to pick at the same time. I pick Soul, and then we got a Kali and an X Ball right after that, right? Um, the cool thing about the fact that we have a Kali and an X Ball is that both of them focus on auto attacks. That's their main source of damage. So me also being on Soul, that means we have three auto attack characters, which means we can be very easily countered. Right, there could, in theory, buy uh, items such as Toxic Blade, buy items such as uh, Mid Guardian Mail, and make it very hard for us to do damage, considering we all rely on the same source of damage. So when I was going into this ranked match, and I probably wouldn't do this regularly, but because this is ranked, I am tryharding. Um, I kind of thinking, how can I diversify our damage so they can't get two items, like both of the tanks get two items, and then just counter all three of us, right? Uh, and then they'll also probably get Spectral Armor against the X-Ball. Um, we kind of put in the situation where I have to kind of think of a way and a build to make it so that we don't rely on auto attacks because that's all three damage dealers. Assassin, Mage, and um, Carry, all relying on auto attacks. Which is a very, very interesting situation because we don't have any burst damage. We only have consistent damage. So if they were to dive our entire team, they can do more damage more quickly, uh, you know, compared to us who have to consistently do damage with our basic attacks. They could walk in and one shot one or maybe even two of us uh, by the time that we're able to start auto attacking, things of that nature. So I think and I hope that I've done a good job kind of, uh, what's the word, mm, letting you know why it wouldn't be the best idea to run a composition like this but again unfortunately this is ranked i couldn't switch by the time that they decided to go that the kali decided to pick kali i couldn't switch by that time i was already locked in uh right so i hope that this kind of really long intro uh was a good way of letting you know what i think the issue with the team composition is and i'm going to now transition into how i built to fix the, this issue right um, this Morgan should die. <laughs> no issue, I hope. Um, but like I mentioned, build. So the thing with Soul is building her non-auto attack altogether is a bit, um, off because her passive is auto attacks. Uh, that's, and her passive is a big part of the character. And then also specifically, you have one ability that can, um, do damage consistently, I would like to say. That's the word I would like to use. Because sure, your 3 does damage, sure, your 1 does damage, but how often are you going to dive their entire team to use your 1 on the ground? And how often is the enemy player going to stand in that little circle to take large amount of damage from your ability? And then also the 3. How often are you going to use your 3 for damage and not to get away? Every time you use that ability, you're going to have to know that if you get dove, you're most likely going to die uh, with no source of escape. Uh, so again, just setting up for uh, what comes next here. So my task that I tasked myself with was coming up with a build that doesn't completely ignore Soul's whole identity of having some auto attack um, tendencies, if you will. Uh, but also allows me to do burst damage that we are severely lacking because without any burst damage, but frankly, I don't think we can win this match. I've already explained why. Uh, we need that burst damage, but I also need to play towards this character's strengths. This character's strength is attack speed, attacking a lot with auto attacks. So I needed to find a good balance with my build to do both, right? Uh, so that I can take care of any situation that we might need. Uh, in this situation, I was able to track her down, and we should be able to kill her, no issue. I just have to catch up and hit some autos. Actually, she's just going to walk in and die to that. And then I'm not really scared, I'm genuinely far ahead, so I can kill the emoji as well, and then I'll go ahead and call the Cold Fury here. Uh, but as I was saying, this is what I needed to be tasked with, and I think I found a, a good kind of build to go with. Uh, the cool thing about this video is I know that these are voiceover, so you don't get the live kind of, you know, experience, uh, but this whole game was me just racking my brain on how i was going to pull this off in the most efficient way possible this is what i need you guys to think when you're uh, thinking about what you're going to build right i want you guys to have the ability to buy stats and not items what do i mean by that uh items change items get buffed items get nerfed no item is going to be strong forever 
no build is going to be the best build. But if you, instead of paying attention to the specific item and instead think about what stats you want, it becomes a lot easier for you to build a, a deny, sorry, dynamic build that can work in the specific situation. Because having the same build that you build every single game is only going to work if you're going up against the same enemy gods every single game, which is not only not going to happen, but I have never had that happen and I have been playing for a long time. I have not even had a game where they have the exact comp back to back ever, right? Um, so keep that in mind. So what this video is planning to do is to show you my process on coming up with a build that works specifically for the situation and is the best build for the situation that I find myself in. Now you might be thinking, Daxon, you have spent 14 minutes, if you look up at the timer, uh, 14 minutes of this game basically giving us this huge intro, but it's necessary and again, I kinda have this goal to make my content better and more informative. If I have to make more videos but go more in depth into certain topics, then that is going to be what I'm going to do. Now obviously I am playing Soul here specifically, um, but this would work for literally every role. The teachings, the item that I'm talking about might not work for every role, but the teachings, the lesson that I'm trying to, you know, uh, verbalize here is going to work for every role. Um, without further ado, actually right before, I want you to remind you, my Discord is down in the description. Uh, I did mention earlier that I do play a lot of games with you guys. I get you, uh, who, if you're in the Discord, uh, I'll go ahead and let you guys know that I'm looking for a couple of players to either play a custom or some, um, what's the word? Some conquest. So if you want to play with me or just need someone else to play with, we have quite a lot of people in the Discord now. So please go ahead and join in the description down below. If you don't have Discord or you know, don't know what Discord is, put simply, Discord is just a kind of group chat. Think about it as a big group chat with me. Uh, and a lot of the people that you've seen on the channel and just a bunch of viewers ready to play smite ready to have some fun Just a big group chat. That's basically what it is uh, And then follow my twitch if you want to catch me live. All right, so now finally without further ado I know this has taken quite a long time. Let's go ahead and get into the build itself All right, so I've set up the for this whole basically half of the video uh, Kind of hyping up this build uh, So I'm gonna start off with my starter. I needed cooldown reduction if I was going to build into a way to do burst damage uh, but also a way to continue to do good damage with my auto attacks and consistent damage with the auto attacks building to the character's strengths i was going to need cooldown reduction uh, especially considering i have truly one ability that's going to be good for uh you know damage uh, consistent safe damage at the very least uh, I needed to, again, get cooldown reduction, but I couldn't expend an item apart from the starter item to get cooldown reduction. Cooldown reductions are usually, cooldown reduction as a stat is seen as a luxury stat. Uh, items that have cooldown reduction usually sacrifice other stats, such as not having penetration or, or something of the sort. Uh, especially items with really large amounts of cooldown reduction, we think about items such as Chronos Pendant. It's literally just a very small amount of damage it's not a small amount of damage but it's small compared to some of the other items book of thoth sitting somewhere around 170 right um items such as typhon's fang have the possibility to give you all the way up to like 170 damage as well items like do more these items give you an immense amount of power uh and if you're going to choose to buy book of thoth instead you're going to sacrifice the um possibility of getting this much power you're not getting any other stats. You're getting mana, but like, who cares? Or mana per five, who cares, right? Like, you're you're literally buying that item strictly to get that cooldown reduction. With this build, considering my main goal is to do burst and also have, you know, auto attack potency, I can't really expend an extra item with mediocre stats to get my cooldown reduction. Uh, but the cool thing about the starter item that is Sands of Time is it gives me 20 cooldown reduction, albeit late game, but, it gives me that 20 cooldown reduction, uh, all while giving me 190 power. That is a lot of power. Granted, I have to be full mana to get that amount of power, uh, but even when I'm not full mana, if I'm sitting around half, it's still a lot more power than I would get from an item such as Chronos Pendant. Uh, we're going to go ahead and kill this Paylate. Now, I'm not going to really be commentating over the game, because again, this video has a specific goal, and it's how to build, right? Um, so like I was mentioning, I needed these two items together. Uh, for a specific reason, I thought, how can I get attack speed, lifesteal, and an immense amount of power 
from my first two items without building any rings because rings again you're paying for a kind of attack speed that you're not really gaining any other stat apart from the passive and the passives from the rings the rings i just don't think are too powerful regularly if i were playing her in the carry role and i wasn't in the predicament that i'm in in this ranked match i would have gone a ring or two but again if i were to buy a ring i'm expending an item slot that doesn't give me burst <laughs> so not an option for me so i needed two items that would give me life steal attack speed and an immense amount of power all together with just two singular items um so i got bancroft's talent and typhoon's fang this is a combo that i go over all of the time i'm constantly talking about this combo it is a very very powerful combo in terms of just grabbing two items and being completely fucking insane unkillable these are the two items that you want to get uh, now i want to talk about the two items passive specifically here real quick uh, Bancroft Talon has this passive where the lower you get in terms of health, the more lifesteal and power that you get. Uh, it also gives you 100 power. With the passive, you're going to be getting a bit more power if you drop a bit low in health. But specifically, getting Typhon's Fang after. Typhon's Fang does this quirky thing with the passive where your healing obtained from magical lifesteal is increased by 15%. Uh, so even though I'm only buying two lifesteal items, or actually three, uh, the lifesteal itself is going to be more efficient, which means I don't have to build more heavily into it, but at the same time, the healing is going to be a lot better, uh, right? But that's not the specific reason why I'm buying this item. Uh, the specific reason why I'm buying this item is the second portion of that passive. Your magical power is increased by twice the amount of your magical lifesteal you have. Uh, put into the simplest terms that I can conjure, the um, number of lifesteal that you have so just the amount of lifesteal that you have take that number double it and you're going to get that as power uh so the cool thing is with these two items i get a very good amount of lifesteal a very good amount of uh power uh, with uh, the upgrade to bancroft talent to nimble bancroft talent i'm going to get an insane amount of attack speed these two items accomplish all of that just with two items um, going further into it uh, how do I get more power, therefore more attack speed, and more lifesteal? Well, let's take a look at these passives again. Uh, like I mentioned, these two items, uh, the m lower you get in health, the more your... The more ho uh, power, sorry, power and lifesteal that you get from the passive of Bancroft. Uh, but the lower you get, if you get more lifesteal, then you get more power from Typhon's Fang passive. And also more power from Bancroft. Uh, passive so you can see these these two items working beautifully together where the, if you were to drop below 40 percent health you are literally insane in terms of damage in terms of lifesteal because your damage is going up you're getting more stacks from the nimble passive which means you're getting more attack speed i don't want to take up more time with these items uh there are videos where i go over the exact math uh and it's literally the latest um soul video i'll link it in the description if i remember to but the most important part is the Medusa video in the description, so like I mentioned, might not happen. Uh, we should be able to win this fight, no issue. I have Beads and Ages to use, just to waste some time, uh, and we'll be able to probably win this fight pretty easily. Like I mentioned, I've spent a lot of time talking about those items. Up next, I went Polynomicon. More lifesteal, which means more lifesteal to be doubled and given to me as power with Typhus Fang passive. That's a big reason about why I got this item. I'm turning these lower power items into higher power items using the passive from Typhon's Fang. And then also, the passive from Polynomicon is very good. It achieves my goal, right? I'm getting more power from the Typhon's Fang passive and the base power from Polynomicon. But if we refer back to the start of this video, I told you my goal was to conjure up a build that is going to give me the burst damage that this team composition is really lacking and also still allow me to be potent with my auto attacks. I can't really waste any item slots on any of the rings, but this item is going to give me that passive where after every ability, my next auto attack does a bonus amount of damage depending on how much power I have. Considering that this build that by the very end of it is going to have a very decent amount of power, um, then this is going to be a big chunk of burst damage, which again, was one of my goals so now with my first three items i have made it towards where i have an immense amount of power as you can tell um a lot of attack speed good life steal to sustain myself and now also burst damage on top of my abilities right up next i went into soul reaper i needed to take care of some of the tankier characters 
I didn't want to go into demonic grip because again I think I'm sacrificing way too much. The items are not good, uh, too good. And I want to be able to do both damage consistently, like I mentioned, and burst damage. Again, this is the whole point of the video, teaching you guys how I go about making a build in a ranked match from scratch. Uh, so I went into Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver gives me a decent amount of power, but specifically it helps me deal with some of the tankier characters, like this Guan Yu, like this Yemoja, by having my abilities do extra amounts of damage based on the enemy team's health. Uh, but that is not going to be a enough on its own to take care of some of the tankier characters. Just doing bonus damage based on their health is not going to be enough. So after this, I'm actually going to top off the build with, um, what is that item called? Spear of the Magus. Spear of the Magus does two wonderful things. One, it gives me a lot of power. Uh, two, it gives me uh, some percent penetration to help me deal some extra damage to, again, the tankier characters. And then also, most importantly, the passive allows me to do an extra percentage based damage to, again, everyone. This includes being good to the tankier characters as well as the, uh, you know, tankier and squishier characters. But specifically, it also gives me lifesteal. Again, continuing on this trend of using Typhon's Fang to increase my power uh you know exponentially uh getting another lifesteal item will max out my lifesteal which uh, if we actually take a look if your lifesteal maxes out at i believe 38 uh don't quote me on that though because it used to be 40 it might be 40 38 32 a number around there but let's just say it's 40 uh, to make the math easier that means that we're getting 80 power on top of the power that tyson's thing already gives you so we're getting basically a brand new item worth of power just from a passive on an item that already has other passives, right? Really, really good. And good stats as well. Uh, we also have to keep in mind uh, something that I didn't mention. Typhon's Fang also gives us some percent uh, penetration. So with Typhon's Fang and the passive and stats from Spear of the Magus, we're able to do quite a lot of damage uh, to the tankier characters. So I'm unfortunately out of time, uh, but I hoped that you guys learned something in terms of the building, uh, in terms of why I want this build, how it works for this specific situation, and just me kind of going over this build and, uh, and telling you guys the process uh, is going to help you guys hopefully uh, as well. But Twitch down in the description, Discord down in the description. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!